Hello, everybody. This is Kenny Cummins here of Chilling with Kenny C right here on TMV Cafe, bringing you entertainment to your ears. And uh, this interview that I'm about to do, I must say, is a long time coming. Um, this lady is an award winner. Uh, she is a proud advocate for local music. You know her from Listen Locally. You know her from her recent new um, vendor uh, endeavor, I should say, Project Ricochet. And you also know her from the award-winning critical acclaim Overtones Live. I look at this lady as a friend and a mentor as far as the local music scene. And uh, it is truly an honor to have Miss Renee Collins Cobb on the show for the very first time. Hello there, Renee. Hello, and thank you so much for having me. As you mentioned, it's a long time coming. I'm so honored to be here with you. And everything that you just said about me, I can say right back to you. I'm just so thankful for your friendship, your mentorship, your guidance, um, being a counselor at times, <laughs> we radio show hosts play a lot of different roles. And I'm just yes. so thankful that you're in the community and also that you and I are really well connected with a couple of other radio show hosts. And I just think it really breeds an environment of collaboration versus competition. And I yeah. love everything about what you do. Um, I totally agree with that. And um, I've known, I guess, Renee and I have known each other probably a good five, four or five plus years now from her previous endeavor before Overtones. So we see each other at, you know, different shows. And of course, the pandemic happened and 2021 happened and Overtones was actually one of the first shows that I went to once the restrictions got loosened a bit at the Austin City Salon in Lexington. So those were some good times. Those were some good memories. I cherish those memories just to get a feel. Um, and Overtones are such an, an incredible uh, platform for local and independent artists. And not only do you do them here in Kentucky, you do them in Tennessee as well. Um, and we'll definitely get to more on Overtones in just a bit. But Project Ricochet, that's definitely something you really want to focus on. So how did Project Ricochet came to be? What was the uh, purpose behind Project Ricochet? Well, that's just wonderful that you asked. And Kenny, let me just say that this is another collection of experiences that I've been able to add to my robust resume. <laughs> and also, I think it's just all about at this point, I'm 62 years old this year. And I just really um, think this is all part of a really um, string of just wonderful experiences that are happening to me that are all in alignment with each other. For example, Project Ricochet is actually a health care provider and also education um, company, mainly public health education. And it's really targeted towards the African-American community here in Lexington and in Kentucky. What has come out of an original, um, I guess, grant to provide COVID vaccine and booster services for people in the Lexington, Kentucky and Kentucky area has really extended out to mental health initiatives. And of course, with mental health comes music and art and all of those great things <laughs> that kind of provide an ecosystem. They all work together. Just most recently, last weekend, we had Barbershop Showcase. And one of the wonderful things that Project Ricochet does is goes into local black owned barbershops here in Lexington. And they see the barbershop as a place, much more than a place just to get a haircut. It's a place where young men are mentored and guided and coached. And also we move in music into that environment. We move in art in that environment. And I've been very happy to serve as their uh, public media and marketing manager for about six months. One of the great connections that we have as I can continue to promote <laughs> Project Ricochet is on April 20th. We're gonna have our very first Stronger Together music concert 
and public health fair. So you get your music that night, but you're also going to be um, exposed to a lot of health vendors here in the area that will be providing assessments, blood pressure checks, um, all this wonderful literature is passed out, and it's all about taking care of yourself um, health-wise and also mental-wise, and also to have this wonderful offering of musical genre available that night. We are going to have I, I think I'm going from like gospel to pop. We're going to have hip hop. We're going to have rap. We got jazz, funk, fusion. We have everything that night in the order of eight artists from Kentucky that are going to be presenting a small sampling of their music that's going to combine to just be this wonderful experience. Free concert. We're asking for a suggested donation of $5 at the door to go towards Project Ricochet, which is a 501c3 organization. That's awesome. Um, what project what you're doing with uh Project Ricochet and spreading awareness um to health and physical health and mental health. Um, you know, something that a lot of people do take for granted, but um is something that needs to be looked at, taken seriously, um, especially people in my community, obviously. So seeing that. Um, an individual like yourself that's being a helping hand and and using your platforms for for something good um, is also an incredible feeling. You know, I've always looked at you as a pillar for the city of Lexington, what you've been able to do with your platforms, with your connections. And um, I think it's wonderful what Project Ricochet is doing, is growing, is evolving. You have fellow artists getting on board, you know, with April 20th coming up. I think that's at the Lyric Theater, a uh, very famous uh, place in Lexington. So definitely check it out on Facebook, Project Ricochet, for more info. Uh, and like the page, and, uh, and you'll find out more info on that. And when and where they have upcoming events. I know my good friend, your good friend, Tony Ravy, he's got an event going on right now as we doing this interview. Yeah. So, uh, so shout out to Tony. Uh, shout out to all the artists that's being on board. Um, so what's it like as far as Project Ricochet? You get, you obviously, you know from music, obviously, and your support. What's it like to have music artists be a part of Project Ricochet, being part of the cause behind Project Ricochet. It has been wonderful. And let me say that this was born out of my experience with being assigned to WUKY's Community Action Board, which was um, organized around diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging efforts. So this has been a really great way because I'm a diversity consultant. That's kind of like my real job. <laughs> I hate to say real job, right? Because, But that's what it is. <laughs> So that's where my experiences come from. And I've been able to really infuse all of those principles into everything that I do. And as someone that believes that we can't have diversity, but also exclude certain types of music or genre or <laughs> age group culture, that this is a really great way to showcase all of that. We have, um, even in this concert, we have, for example, we have NBC's The Voices, Holly Forbes. We have American Idol's Chase Bush. We have Adeline Rainey, who is a 12-year-old Appalachian storyteller. Uh, we have Tony Wavy. We have VSP Band, which is just a wonderful R&B band. And we also have, as I'm trying to think to make sure I don't miss everybody, we also have Bryce O'Quay, who's going to be my co-host for the evening. And that also incorporates all of the art. So I just like this because, like I said, it is an ecosystem. And together, there's just nothing we can't accomplish. Absolutely. And definitely shout out to Bryce. He's definitely one of the most talented illustrators and comic artists in the city. Um, and he's been working with Tony for quite some time now with yeah. their Matt Ravy shows. So seeing y'all link up the way that y'all have um, is awesome. Combining music combining art and combining everything else, you know, awareness for health and uh, uh, mental health, physical health. And uh, I love everything about Project Ricochet. By the way, 
it, they do have a website, projectricochet.org, yes, uh, for all the info and check out the show April the 20th at the Historic Literary Theater. It is a free show. They are taking donations at the door. Um, and all the proceeds will go directly towards uh, Project Ricochet. So uh, check it out. It's, they got so much uh, going on and uh, for more upcoming shows and events and networking, things of that nature. So I'm very happy what, you, what you're what doing with Project Ricochet and everybody involved. So it's, it's an awesome um, you know, venture that you're doing. Um, you. People... You know, and you have, and you are well loved and well respected in the city, um, in this in the community, obviously. So with listen local, with overtones, um, so definitely props to you for that. So first thing, and to go further, congratulations, uh, by the way, for uh, winning. At the Lexington Music Awards this past uh, about a few weeks back. Yes. Uh, so how did how did it feel being at the awards show? You've been there several times now. You've won multiple awards. How did it feel um uh, that particular night um uh, on winning uh, for the that, award? That night being also the tenth anniversary of the Lexington Music Awards was just very special for a lot of reasons. Um, the other thing I noticed is just from being there and also doing some pre-shows on overtones for some of the nominees, I think it was a record class of new nominees, first time nominees. And we wanted to make sure that we really brought that out that night, but also all of the events leading up to it. And I mentioned first time nominees because this was the third time that we have won Music Company of the Year over a period of a few years. But I might want to add, because I think it's real easy, and I've heard people say this, like, oh, they win everything, you all win everything. And I need to really clarify, because this almost sounds crazy to think about, but I like to encourage people in a way that says, I mean, for the first five or six years, we didn't win anything. We were happy to be at the table. We were happy to be at the party. And I say that because it takes a long time, right, to establish a network. And that's why I want to encourage these first time nominees <laughs> that this isn't the last time that you're going to be here. And just to keep going, because we're seeing the fruits of our efforts definitely in 2023, even outside of the Lexington Music Awards. And we're just seeing a lot of hard work that a lot of people don't see. It's kind of like roots growing underneath the ground that nobody sees for like seven years. And then in like one final year, all of the things sprout up. And I will just say that I'm very thankful for the people that have worked in concert with us. Working in concert is much more than a cliche to us. It is a, it's a lifestyle and it's the only way that we can accomplish what we all accomplish is if we work in concert together. Working mean, that's the hard work, right? That's yeah. the digging and the planning and preparing. But in concert is all of these beautiful things and experiences that we see sprout out of all of that hard work. And we do not do it by ourselves. You know, music is indeed a collective effort, um, regardless of the genre of music. Songwriting, producing, mm -hmm. mix, engineering. It's a collective effort. Thing that it, it takes to put out this music that's out, that's out on the radios and your platforms it takes it takes that much of an effort to to make it happen um i've been nominated nine times of the t eight times in 10 years and um and i and i got two plaques yes. um, yes, I'm, I'm, so i'm i'm honored just to be nominated i was just an unknown independent radio guy. And now I'm like, my mom and dad poking at me like, oh, you're famous now, huh? I'm you like, have no. Nah. My mom and dad did the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they Love did. Love the mom and dads. So uh, congrats to all the winners of the award show. Uh, congrats to Dave, to Angeli, and everyone for this 10th event. You know that's a milestone. That's that's a big deal. It takes a lot to uh, put together and gather everybody. 
as, or as far as many people for a night like that. And of course, Bill Mack hosting uh, prior to the award show, you and Adam Banks, you mentioned some of the first time nominees. Um, Adam Banks, fellow nominee in the radio DJ category. Yeah, join forces and gather all the majority of the first time nominees to be on uh, the studio to yeah. do the interviews. So what was that like linking up with Adam and having all these first time nominees in the same roof, you know, just leading up to the washer? What was it like working with Adam? Well, it's been wonderful. Let me just back up and say that Adam has been my coach and my mentor, and he did something that nobody else could do, which was talk me into doing live radio. Um, in the past, I was just, I'm a scripted girl. I like to have everything planned and prepared. I have got everything like written down at this minute, we're going to do this. Um, and uh, Radio Lex challenged me with just working with Adam um, during one of their fundraising weeks about doing some like live radio. And I was yeah. so scared. My husband, Warren, was just like, you need to do this and just give it a try. You'll probably find out you like it better. <laughs> and I do. <laughs> It's just so interesting, but he has really helped me through that, and he is such a great presence in the community as well, emerging, and also just wonderful to do these music shows with, because he kind of carries a lot of the dialogue, and I'm like the one that's picking out the songs and the guests and trying to line up people with very similar interests. This last show that we did have before the Lexington Music Awards, we managed to put 18 people on the air in one hour. <laughs> and we had a platoon system. We had it all staged. This was like in 15 minutes, this group's going through. And I was so proud of that moment because a lot of these people had never met each other. They maybe talked on Facebook, but they've never met each other you know, personally. And they're just really engaging with each other. And Kenny, I really think that that's what the roles of people like you and myself are, that we're connectors. At the core of who we are, we're connectors. And if something great happens as a result of you getting somebody together on your show with someone else, or even out in public, that to me is the ultimate in life experience. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've seen the clips and everybody was just, it was all fun. Good times. Everybody's happy with each other. Different walks of life. Some are just new at the music, and some have been where you know well veteran for quite some time. So when I saw the clips, I'm like, man, everybody's just happy for one, for one another. And yeah, connection is definitely a core as far as radio DJ personalities, podcasters, just have a way of bringing people together, um, yeah. whether we met each other before or whether this is the first time. This is very therapeutic with what we do. Oh, it is. Um, and it just, it, it's just a way to express ourselves and help us get through whatever we was feeling at the time. Just having an engaging in conversation. Um, and that was my first time knowing Adam, just seeing his name on the list. And I met him at the award show. Very, very cool dude. And uh, he just got a, a new gig just yep, recently. So congrats to him on that, on hits. Uh, so you'll be hearing him on Sunday afternoons uh, for that particular uh, station. So that's pretty cool. So projectricochet.org, please check it out. Check out the, all the info. Check out the artist that's on board with it. Check out the show on April the 20th. That's going to be at the uh, the Lyric Theater. A uh, variety of artists will be on, on hand to perform. Mm -hmm. And it's also going to be a fair that's going on. You know, get your blood pressure checked and uh, get some more info on, on doctors and, and health instructors and just try to make sure your health is good. Because you yeah. can't enjoy this music that we enjoy without yeah. taking care of ourselves, you know. So that's awesome. And, and Kenny, there is a direct connection, as we all know, between music linked to reducing anxiety, stress, blood pressure. Um, you know, it 
it helps you like work out sometimes, right? <laughs> if you're listening to music in the background. And that's what we're really trying to show in this link. I know it sounds kind of odd to think, you know, we're going to have a concert and a public health fair, just like we had the barbershop showcase. We're also going to have music. And we're, gonna, you know, and I think that's what the beauty of what Project Ricochet does for this community. Um, they also have a financial uh, literacy arm as well, and also uh, community fit classes. So this is much more than even what I'm able to express in this very short period of time that we have. Yeah, absolutely. So things that, you know, we go to school, we go through the classes, we go to college, we go through that phase, like you learn some things, but you don't learn everything no. until later. You know, life is a great teacher. You know, we find out things that school doesn't teach us. So um, the fact that you, you bring in all this together, you know, music and health and, and literacy and financial needs, helps, advice, input. Um, I, I definitely am very intrigued with this. So um, I definitely look forward to checking out some future uh, project ricochet events uh this is is a good time um for for artists and and just music fans in general to check out project ricochet and that and because they got so much to come you know just april 20th is just a sign of things they got some weekly stuff they got monthly stuff yes. and they got so much more um, daily. <laughs> um, daily. Very, yeah. very daily indeed so now I want to talk overtones with you because I, of course, I've heard of overtones before I started going into the studio for um, Austin City Salon. Mm -hmm. So 2021. Yeah, it was 2021. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, I was going to regular and I seen some Mama Said Stream Band. I mm -hmm. seen um, Kiana and the Song Kings all the way from Louisville. Yes. And I seen, so you're getting artists all over the Commonwealth. So this show has grown. It has evolved a lot since then. You're doing shows remotely. You do shows in Tennessee. Um, so how do you feel about overtones in general as far as continue to grow, continue to evolve and just and and what you and Warren have been able to do for so long and sustainability, you know, just how does it feel? with everything that's happening with overtones right now. Well, we're real proud of the history. And if I could just all quickly go through how it's evolved. Um, we got asked from Mary Clark, who was, who, she's now at WRFL, but it used to be at Radio Lex and was looking for a new concept show with music that was just different. Um, than maybe what was on, you know, radio at the time. And we picked the name Overtones. Warren and I were driving around the country trying to figure out a really unique name to name this. And we just thought about Overtones because it was such a symbolic word in telling, you know, the things that you're hearing above the actual song itself. So, you know, Overtones are tones that you hear above the actual singing or the actual tone. So that was a main purpose of it. Um, you know, we, we enjoyed some great studio shows. We moved from that Steam Academy that was in a little teeny basement yeah. <laughs> over on, uh, over in the, I guess, North Broadway area. Yeah. And then we moved over to Lyric and we were able to have more than like one person, you know, doing a song, like we had maybe trios. We were able to put some drums in there. And then, you know, COVID hit. So we had to totally pivot and we had to totally think differently. And the one thing I'm really proud of is that we did keep the show going. And just like you got really creative during those times as well, yeah. right? We had this wonderful thing with Zoom, but we also did some repurposing of shows that we had done, do some combinations, you know, like do Women of Kentucky, the Men of the Bluegrass, you know, just kind of combining that. So when we came out of COVID, Austin City Saloon came to us with an idea of doing a live production. And it was during that time that we really upped our video and our audio game. And we brought on a team of people that really worked with us. After we did one stint there at Austin City, we moved to Bluegrass Sparrow 
House in Richmond, who's another wonderful host. And so we've been able to experience all these beautiful stages. So if you visit our YouTube channel, you'll see that we're at a myriad of locations. So it's not the same set you see. Yeah. We also experienced a wonderful period of time at Tipsy Cow in Georgetown. And that's when we upped our video game even more. <laughs> and we saw some really good shows come out of that, most notably with Rachel Crow, Holly Forbes, the Goodwin Brothers, Blair Crimmins and the Hookers, Rags and Riches, A Wicked Piece. So we had some really, really high quality shows there. The last year and a half, we've been actually partnering with Nash House in Nashville, Tennessee. And what we're doing there is we are finding the artists that are from Kentucky that have made a bold move to move to Nashville to try to make a go of it. Uh, so we've had the wonderful experience of presenting Kentucky talent, but in a Nashville setting. And out of that, we've seen, you know, Taylor Hughes, for example, we've seen Ian Abel as another artist, Parker Hastings, um, all of these people that we've seen perform in Lexington that are now making their home in Nashville. Zach Hart is another really great example. So that's kind of where we're going right now. And I can't say that that's permanent because we are just, you know, always looking for opportunities. We even had a show produced in Copenhagen, Denmark, with a former Lexington artist who's Philip Leland. He used to be at the Twisted Cork open mics like every night. Um, after COVID, he moved back to his native home in Denmark. And we saw him. He just popped up on X Factor Denmark. So Denmark didn't kind of follow the same protocol that the U.S. was <laughs> following during the COVID years. So yeah. they went on with their TV production. So we saw him and we were like, this is just incredible. We have an open mic, listen locally open mic person that's doing it on the X Factor. So we had him actually record an overtone show in a venue in Denmark. They produced it, sent it back to us in the States, and it became an overtone show. And it is one of the best shows that we've ever done. So we've really expanded. I love where it's going. And if I could just say that what I think this does is there's a lot of attention on competition, for example, you know, in, in our community, in the music world. But we are more like not slicing pie. We are more about making more pie. And if I could just have everybody understand that, that the way that we create opportunities is not to compete, but it's to make more opportunities. So that's kind of a mindset combined with a skill set that we really think is necessary to succeed in this post-pandemic time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the competition, people get in, you know, we, we like sports. We grew oh, up yes. watching sports. We like to see people compete. Music is different from sports or any form of entertainment. Like, we, we just want to be entertained. We just yes. want people to express themselves and uh, showcase their talent. You know, you know, we, we, we've seen people from Kentucky grow and evolve. Um, and there's, there's room for everybody to shine. There there's, is. There's room for everyone to, to you know, to expand per se. Um, music is, you know, I, I love what music is happening here in Kentucky. I love what artists has been able to do. And just I feel like that's 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 room for everybody. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to step on anybody just to get ahead. You know, what I'm saying it's 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 a good time to be a music fan in, in Kentucky with so much that's happening all these incredible venues, Trust the Court, the Borough, uh, then Richmond, Georgetown, Paris. That's 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 plenty of food for everybody to eat. There is. So it's <laughs> so it's it's just let's just let's just get let's just build let's just keep that in mind. Just know that, you know, this this city can thrive when we are in this together, you know. You know, we already been through enough, you know, these past few years as it is. So it's like we 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 back to some normalcy and that people could be able to whatever they were wanting to accomplish then they can do now. That's so right. I, I I love what what's happening in, in Lexington and central Kentucky and Kentucky in general. So it's it's so much talent and uh I just wanna see everybody succeed.
And more so importantly, just be happy. And more importantly, just be happy with what they're doing. Because yeah. when you show, because when that happiness show, everybody's going to walk with you uh, at the end of the day. So that's one for everybody to eat. There he is. Uh, so when I, I just want to, you know, as we get to these final minutes here, um, thank you so much. You've been very, very supportive towards me for all these years. You and Juan have always been op um, open, very kind and welcoming me. Feel like people, and I've heard Renee Collins call for all these years, and now that I've met her, she is everything that people say about her. She's a heartwarming person. And she loves the pictures, as you can tell. We've had all sorts of pictures. So um, you definitely have inspired me um, to keep going. Um, I hope I can keep doing this for as long as I can, you know, because, you know, and I think I, I, I like to say that I enjoy doing what I'm doing, you know, 17 years is how long I've done this. And uh I'm and I feel like I'm embraced in this community. You are because of people like you and, and Warren, Renee, Whitney, Vanessa, Wags and Witches, yes. Lady Peace, the list goes on and on. I'm embraced by this community. They've opened the doors to me and they made me feel like family. So I just want to say to you, Renee, I'm giving you your flowers <laughs> for everything that you have done, for what you have contributed, and what you continue to do with Project Ricochet, with Overtones, with Listen Locally. And, you know, if you need somebody that's going to be a helping hand, I say go to Renee Collins Cobb because she got you. Uh, so thank you, Renee, for for everything you've done for the community uh, and continue to do so after so many years of hard work and dedication to your craft. So I just want to say thank you. So well, I want to thank you as well, Kenny. And you are all of that to us as well and to everybody else. And again, you're part of what we call, you know, bringing the best this great state of Kentucky has to offer music fans. And, you know, we always end it with the cliche that we remind you that when words fail, music always speaks. And we are so glad that you are speaking to this generation and also generations to come. So thank you so much for your long service and hard work. You've really paved a great road for people like us as well. Well, thank you so much, Renee. Uh, again, check out projectricochet.org. Uh, check out the overtones and check out Listen Locally. They got merch. Yes. So you, you can really show that you represent. I am got a local shirt for me. I so, love that shirt. You know, I've got one of those myself. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you, you know the saying, great minds think alike. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so thank you, Renee, for, for your time and uh, looks like I have to return a favor and make a trip to Overtones. One oh, of yes. Definitely. So, <laughs> I, I know that's coming, so I just might as put that out there. <laughs> yes, uh, definitely. So, Definitely. Oh, um, you enjoy your night. You enjoy your week, and um, I'm pretty yeah. We we'll, we will see each other. Yes, we at will. some of these events is you know down the road. So, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Kenny. And uh, I want to thank you all for listening. This is my interview with the one and only Wene Collins Cobb, the multi-time award-winning. Renee Collins Cobb. I'm Kenny Cummins of Chilling with Kenny C. And uh, consider yourselves chilled uh, as we go on with the spring weather. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. You all enjoy the rest of your day, enjoy the rest of your week, and uh, continue to support local music, you know, because it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. I'll go ahead and do the hard thing too. <laughs> you have a good night, Renee. Yes, right. me too. Thank you. All right.